What is up nerds, Matt here, and this is my review of LEGO's new Star Wars Imperial Star Destroyer. The biggest and the best of the summer 2024 Star Wars wave, this set includes 1,555 pieces and will cost you $160 here in the US. This set comes with six regular minifigs that complement the Star Destroyer, and of course, the 25th anniversary minifig of Cal Kestis. Looking at the back of the box, we can see that the main play feature here is that this thing opens up like it's the main event at your high school biology class, but we're gonna get to that in a few minutes. Don't let the smaller looking box fool you. This is a beefy build and comes with a fat instruction book and 14 bags. Of course, it does come with a sticker sheet, but I think all these make sense and are probably a good use of stickers for things like the translucent displays and the workstation, so I really don't mind them here. Now let's take a quick look at the minifigs that come with this set, starting of course with Darth Vader. Mr. Vader is basically the exact same version we've seen for a few years now, although I'm okay with that because he looks great with detailed printing on his chest, legs, and arms. He has that same great printing on his face that we're familiar with, and of course he comes with that frosted red lightsaber. Commander Praji is that sour-faced commander from the Devastator, and he looks pretty good here with accurate printing on his chest insignia. No printing on his arms or legs, but I think the chest is really all you need here, and the designer captured his grumpy face pretty well. Next is an Imperial crew member who has really nice printing across his chest and legs and looks a little like he was caught playing Galaga while working at his console. The Imperial gunner also has nice printing on his chest and cargo pockets on his pants, and he wears a crazy looking time trial helmet that's designed to funnel rainwater directly into your eyes. I'm a little surprised they only gave her one face since that helmet completely covers the back, but it's great to see some variety in the faces and the skin tones. The Imperial Navy Trooper wears yet another crazy helmet and gets nice looking printing on his chest and solid black pants. This is the only Imperial minifig here to get two faces, with the first one being this very focused look, and the other side looks like things are maybe going kind of badly. Next is the single Stormtrooper, which feels like one less than what we should be getting, but hey, that's what happens in 2024. I think these standard Stormtroopers look great with nice looking printing on their chest and on the legs. I think the helmets look great too, but unfortunately, because of the way they're designed here, you basically can't turn the heads at all. So I don't really love that. We get some additional variety here with the Stormtrooper's face, although again, only on the one side. Finally, we have Cal Kestis, who might be the reason some of you decided to pick this set up in the first place. I love seeing great characters from the video games make their way into the Star Wars canon and Lego sets, although you better believe I am really regretting not buying that BD-1 set when it was at Costco a year or two ago, because I really, really would like to have that little tiny BD-1 minifig. Cal looks great with really detailed printing all across his chest and his pants. That reddish-orange hairpiece they gave Cal looks perfect here and allows him to come with two facial expressions. The first is a light smirk, and the second is kind of a gritty fighting face. I think there are really just two things I would like to have seen done a little differently with Cal here. The first and the most obvious one is that he's so well known for having a cape or a poncho of some kind that it feels like an oversight to not include one here. I think he looks great without it, but I'd rather have the option since they're probably never going to make this minifig again. The second thing I would have changed is that I really wish they had included a few different lightsaber blade colors just to like added some variety so that we can customize this minifig in the same way that we can in the games. Okay, actually, I guess I meant three things because I really, really wish that they would have included the little tiny BD-1 that came with the BD-1 set a couple years ago because he would look perfect sitting next to the Cal here. It doesn't make any sense. I know that you can get him aftermarket and I'm probably gonna end up picking him up from Bricklink like a lot of you might, but you know, to not include him here just feels like a little mean on Lego's part, you know? I know there are a lot of videos you could be watching right now, so if you're still watching this one, then I really appreciate you. Please consider hitting that like button if you like what you see and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. If you don't like what you see and you're still watching this video, then I really respect your masochism. I'm here for it. Now let's take a look at the Star Destroyer itself, which is actually a pretty big build. The last time we got this ship was all the way back in 2014, and it's a few studs smaller than that older set. Some people are really upset about the slight shrinkflation happening here with this set, but in my case, ignorance is bliss because I don't have any of those older sets to compare it to, so I think it looks really good. I've heard all the complaints about shrinkflation and what happened to this ship, but I think, honestly, just looking at what's in front of me, it feels like a pretty nice set, and it feels pretty big to me, and it feels like a pretty fair price, I don't know. The exterior looks pretty clean for a playset, especially that upper area by the bridge. To me, it looks a little bit more tiled off than the older sets, and personally, I'd rather have a set that feels a little bit more detailed and finished than a set that's a little bit larger. I think LEGO has done a pretty nice job of closing up all the gaps in this set while making sure it still opens up pretty easily. The whole thing is almost entirely light gray with just a few darker bricks peeking out here and there, which gives this a very uniform look that I think looks really good. Each side of the bridge comes with eight cannons that can be rotated back and forth by pulling on a little lever at the back. 
This works really well, and I don't think the lever looks bad the way play features sometimes can, so I love the way LEGO added in this little mechanism. It was kind of fun to build too, although, you know, because this is obviously a very symmetrical build, you should probably count on building everything twice. This feature does basically prevent you from pointing all the cannons in different directions, but I think it looks better for them all to be pointing in the same direction anyway, and it's kind of fun and satisfying to like move them all together at once. The bridge section looks really nice and detailed with one of the stickers being used here, and all of the pieces and the greebling really help to make this area feel super finished. Around back, the engine bay and the engines all look fantastic. They're all contained within this really nice looking recessed area instead of sticking out of the back, which is exactly the way it should be, and all the three main thrusters look great. The four smaller engines are finished in a gray instead of that translucent blue here, which might technically be wrong, but maybe it's possible for you to only turn on the big boys, I don't know. This back spine area also looks really detailed and opens up into a compartment where you can store the extra green laser projectiles. Speaking of lasers, there are two in this set. They extend out of the rear area of the top section and are fired by pressing on these two rounded Technic pieces. The whole thing looks super clean and doesn't detract at all from the overall look of the set, even when they're installed. Let's find out if my aim is as bad as the typical Imperial cannon operator. Ooh, okay. Get wrecked, Leia. Wow, I missed. Leia's fine. The last feature I want to show you on the outside is the carrying handle, which can be accessed by opening up two studded tiles in front of the bridge. The studs on the top are a pretty clever reminder of where to open up and make it a little bit easier to grab onto them, and afterward it's super easy to lift up on this T-handle. Sometimes, you know, these handles can be balanced a little bit funny and the ship or the ATT or whatever sort of rocks back and forth or it tilts forward or backward in a weird way. I don't know if it's intentional or just luck, but when you lift this thing up by the handle, it's basically perfectly level. It's amazing. It looks great. And it's super easy to lift up and it's, I don't know, almost a play feature. Not that you have to use the handle because this is a pretty sturdy ship, so you can totally pick it up by the little sides or whatever with two hands if you want to do that and not use the handle if that's your thing. After you pick it up, you can totally like carry it around with one hand if you want to do that or balance it in one hand like your waiter or something. Uh, the whole ship is a lot sturdier than I expected it to be given the size. I'm not going to do that. Opening the Star Destroyer up isn't quite as easy as it is with other sets. The first thing you'll need to do is pick up this weapon block and set it to the side. Once you have that top part set to the side, you can basically just like unfold this thing and open it out flat and you get the view of the entire interior. And I have to be honest, to me this thing looks like a roadkill when you open it up. It looks like just a hot mess everywhere with lots of colors and anti-studs and so much going on and a lot of visual noise and I think it looks terrible. It makes complete sense as a play feature because you have unlimited, unfettered access to the interior where you can move things around and play with it and do whatever you want in there. It's just not super pretty looking once you do that. The interior is basically divided into two main sections. The section at the front is that lower bridge area where Imperials are sitting down at the monitors and you can sometimes see Vader walking over that area looking down on the workers from that platform. That's why this section includes that studded central beam where you can place minifigures. These black pieces here are meant to represent seats that you can use to place a minifigure at these consoles where some of the stickers are used. Just don't think that you're going to be able to close the top unless everyone is sitting down because you're not going to be able to close everything up if anyone is standing in that front section. But with the stickers applied to those consoles and everything, it looks pretty good. And they added some nice details to a section that to me feels somehow both empty and cramped at the same time. The back section is larger and more interesting, I think, and includes a desk area, a medical bay of some kind, a hollow display showing our Star Destroyer and an enemy fleet, more consoles and some storage crates that hold binoculars and thermal detonators, and a large display screen showing diagrams of this ship and some TIE fighters. That desk has a chair beside it that swivels around and a tablet on top, as well as a cup for your Imperial coffee. The medical bay has a wall panel with a blue syringe beside it and a fridge on the left with a bottle of juice that is definitely starting to go bad, but everyone's afraid to throw it away because we think it might be Vader's. Also over here is this tiny little mouse droid, which looks pretty nice, I think, and is scaled pretty well compared to the minifigures and other stuff in this interior. I think the last time we got this set in 2014, it also came with a really cool, like, little Palpatine hologram that you could use, which looked pretty cool, but I don't think that would have made a lot of sense, like, next to the holo table with a little situation report, and I like that too, so I don't know. Before we close it up, there's also this little weapon rack in the middle so you can store all your blasters there, or actually just two blasters. To close things up again, you just lift and fold down on the two large side panels. Sometimes they need a little bit of help getting lined up and sitting properly. Just keep an eye on the center line and make sure that gap is small and even. 
It might take a little playing around with it. After that, you can take the little weapons array block and slide it in from the front and move it around a little bit until it sort of like sits properly in there where there's no gaps or anything. So if you want that Cal Kestis minifig, you're either gonna have to pick up this ship or you're gonna have to get them from Bricklink. If you like big gray ships, and if you don't have any of the earlier Star Destroyers, like I also don't, then I think this set is kind of a must buy. It's a little on the expensive side compared to a lot of Star Wars sets, I know, but it's priced, I think, pretty reasonably for all the pieces that it comes with and all the minifigures and everything, so it looks really good on display. I think it's worth picking it up, and you could even like hang it from the ceiling if you really want to scare the girls away. I'm a little too lazy to make an affiliate link, so if you just like think of me when you're paying for this, then I'll know and I'll appreciate it. Later, nerds! Thank you.